Hey everybody, so I wanted to do one of these My Vegan Story things. I'm usually not one to follow trends, but I just felt like doing this. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably know all this, but uh, I'll go into it for the purposes of making this video. So about 10 years ago, it'll be February 1st, 2005, I went vegetarian and I was dating a girl who was vegetarian and and at that point, I didn't eat uh, chicken or turkey because I had like a bad experience seeing a turkey get slaughtered when I was little. Didn't really like fish, but still ate like red meat and cheese and standard American diet. And when she said she was, and I liked tofu, when she said she was vegetarian, I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot. And I tried it for 30 days or for like a month, for like February of that year, and then just sort of kept going. And then people would be like, well, are you vegetarian? And I was like, I don't know. I was doing this one-month thing and I'm still going on it. And it took about three or four months to finally be like, okay, yes, I am vegetarian. And I kind of did that for several years and uh, got kind of found out about the environmental impacts of uh, eating animal products. Like, just sort of did it for health reasons and because I didn't like meat but I was still eating like junk food vegetarian diet pretty much and um, kind of found out about the whole environmental aspect and the whole like animal rights aspect of it uh, later on into it and I got really into the environmental aspect because I was um, I don't know I just always been into recycling and, and, and conservation and things like that even from a young age that always really resonated with me so in 2007 I, I I researched it more and I kind of found out about veganism and I thought it was like a little bit extreme but seeing the environmental impacts of it and the the animal agriculture impacts of it I thought you know that's I should probably do that so I tried back then to go vegan and it really just fell flat on my face I was didn't really know how to cook and was like trying to source like vegan foods in Texas and even though it was Austin it, it was tough and I remember like going on this vegan forum and everyone was just like real uptight about like you got to throw away all your leather and you can't do this and you can't do this all these other things besides the diet and I just felt like really overwhelmed and like judged by everybody and it was sort of this like competition of who could be the most vegan and like just always putting other people down for any little mistakes and just really didn't resonate with me and I kind of scrapped it and was just like, ah, oh, they're a bunch of fucking wackos, like, whatever, you know, vegetarian's good enough. I, and I was doing things like drinking soy milk instead of regular milk, but I would still go out and like, you know, have pizza with cheese on it and all that. I, I never really ate eggs because I always thought they were disgusting from when I was, even when I was a little kid, like people would make me scrambled eggs and it was just like the grossest tasting thing. So, kind of just did that for a long time, and then uh, in 2010, my health kind of slowly deteriorated, like, well, I should say pretty rapidly deteriorated over the course of the year. Kind of started with just, like, stomach aches, and then it progressed into, like, all this, like, really bad fatigue, where I was having to drink, like, all these energy drinks just to, like, function. And so I had fatigue and I had like muscle soreness because I was really into uh, like lifting weights and working out and I was like training with a trainer and all this. So I would have like stomach aches and I would have muscle aches and I would have like fatigue. And it seemed like every meal that I ate, I would just like feel like, oh my God, like a bomb just hit, went off in my stomach and just like have to lie down. And it was like every single meal. And uh, really like didn't know what to do just sort of like thought it was a consequence of like getting old I guess at that time I was like 28 29 ish and I'm um, 33 now and like I remember I went to a footbag tournament there was like the world championships in uh, Oakland that summer and I just remember like not being able to poop for like four or five days and my, I was eating all this food because I was really hungry. I was working out a lot. And my stomach was like just puffed out to here. And um, normally I would just like drink an energy drink and that would kind of stimulate my body into like doing a BM, but it just, <laughs> that stopped working. And 
I was, you know, I was pretty much just eating like soy and wheat and cheese and, you know, processed refined carbohydrates and like processed refined mock meats as my staples and not a whole lot of fruits or vegetables. And I was always thin, so I never like thought anything of it. Like I just thought, oh, I have good genetics, I'm thin, like I don't need to eat healthy like all those crazy people. Like I'm a vegetarian, that's good enough. And I remember like at work, they would like bring brownies in and like pass them around. I'd take like two or three and people were like, oh, you know, you're gonna like eat those brownies, it's gonna catch up to you. And be like, whatever, I'm, I'm still thin, I work out a lot, like I can, I can do it. Like sucks to be you, lazy person with bad genetics who doesn't exercise. And uh, the funny thing is it did catch up to me, but not in the way that you, like I didn't gain weight. I just had all these other health problems. And I was knocking back like, you know, mad Pepto-Bismol all the time. Like I had like just like a ton of it like in my, uh, in my briefcase here, backpack, whatever you want to call it. And um, so things got really bad uh, where... I would just like, you know, have to lie down after meals and felt sick all the time. So finally, I remember I, I had a friend who said, oh, you know, I tested positive for like gluten sensitivity and like it's having all these stomach aches and now I'm like feeling a lot better with like getting acupuncture for it. And I was like, oh, okay, that's like kind of hippie, but like I'm like running out of options here. So I went and got a, a, a allergy test. And uh, I remember just like thinking, you know, I'm not allergic to any food, but then I was reading about people can develop allergies and sensitivities later in life. So it's like, okay, maybe this is true. And I was like, sort of waiting for the results to come in. And I started like calling the lab every day. So finally, the guy calls me back. I'm like so relieved. And he says, well, you tested a four <laughs> out of seven for sensitivities to a whole bunch of foods. I says, what foods? He says, soy, wheat, brewer's yeast, milk. Uh, just like rattles off this like long list of foods and it's like yeah that's pretty much everything I eat I'm thinking so I say well okay so now what's um I ask him like well, what do you what do you give me like what do you what are you gonna prescribe me and he says to me oh I, there's no medicine for this you, you have to cut these foods out of your diet and I'm thinking like are you freaking kidding me bro <laughs> what am I gonna eat <laughs> and it you know, I, I guess it's some, like it never occurred to me like, oh, maybe I should start eating meat again. Like that was just totally out of my consciousness. But um, yeah, I had to start like buying, because I just like microwaved, you know, Amy's tamales. And so now I had to buy like the Amy's like macaroni and cheese that was like soy free and and dairy free and, and, and all this and gluten free and Oh, it's going to like um, this place called Central Market, which is like a kind of like an upscale uh, grocery store in in Texas, and like buying all these like packaged, like healthy foods that didn't have all the allergens that I had. And I was like, spent like two hundred fifty bucks on like groceries for the week, and like the food just tasted like cardboard. I remember getting these like gluten free bagels that were just like, it was just like eating chalk. <laughs> I was like, this is so awful. And I really wasn't feeling that much better. And I was like, sorry, I knew I was allergic to um, lactose. So I started taking lactate every time I ate pizza and all this. And it's like just spending mad money on this stuff and like having to drive pretty far to go to this grocery store and like just being like, oh man, now I'm one of those freaking people who eats all these specialty foods and like can't have gluten and all this shit. And I was feeling pretty down on myself. And so... I kind of like in my scrappiness decided like, well, hey, I can start making smoothies, you know, that'll be easier. And so I, I just started like taking whatever was in the fridge and the freezer, like, you know, make smoothies that have like broccoli and jalapeno and apple and so it's like ridiculous uh, ingredients, just sort of like kitchen sink, just throw it in there and they taste like crap and, and uh, didn't really know what I was doing. And uh, I decided, like, well, you know, maybe if I, like, looked up smoothie recipes, like, I could make something that tastes better. Because it's just sort of, like, 
well, if I can't microwave it, like the, the smoothie's like the next best thing because then it, they're both just like you put the food in it and you push the button and then in like a minute it's ready, right? Like that's, I'm not getting into that complicated cooking shit because every time I do that, it turns out like crap. So I look up a video, I look up smoothie recipes and I come across Dan the Man, the Life Regenerator at McDonald's. And he's like in front of an RV, like just throwing like piles and piles of food into like a blender or a juicer. And he's talking crazy talk about spirituality and cleansing and all this. And I'm thinking like, dude, just cut to the freaking chase with the smoothie recipes. And I remember watching this one video where he's like, he's like, this is going to be my lunch. It's just like straight up fruits and vegetables. I got this bowl of mangoes and they're all cut up. It's mango chunks. And then I blended... Um, uh, bananas with spinach and just pouring that over it so it was like a bowl of mangoes with bananas and spinach blended poured over it and he was like eating it with a fork and he's like you know this is straight up fruits and vegetables it's the two healthiest foods that's what I eat that's what I make my meals out of and I was just like oh of course like fruits and vegetables I knew fruits and vegetables were the two healthiest foods like learn that in kindergarten you know of course like but if you ate an entire meal of them, like, that would be the healthiest. Like, of course. I just had this, like, epiphany. So I started to get really into the raw foods. And I decided, like, you know, it just became much easier to go vegan when I didn't have to, like, buy all this, like, processed stuff and, like, read all these ingredients to figure out, like, okay, is this stuff vegan, you know, and just sort of made fruits and vegetables a staple of my diet and it was on the six year anniversary. It was like February 1st, 2011 that uh, I just went vegan. I remember I ran the Tough Mudder uh, the day before and uh, that's a really tough race. It's like a 12 mile obstacle race with like electrocution and fire pits and ice baths and all this stuff. And I remember getting to the end and they give you all the swag and uh, they give, they give you all these like free goodies when you cross the finish line and they handed me this stuff called honey milk. And I just looked at it, I was like, why would I want to drink this now? Like this is just like some crap in a bottle and it's got honey and it's got milk and I know neither of those ingredients are vegan. Like even though I wasn't like consciously vegan at that point, I said, no, I'm going to pass. And then like you got a f ticket for a free beer and I was like, no, I don't want a beer because I knew I was like allergic to brewer's yeast and alcohol wasn't agreeing with me too much. So I scrapped all that and like just kind of, I don't know, after that when I sort of realized like I had done Tough Mudder, that that was that hard and I completed that, I could do being vegan. And it was like the very next day, it just happened to be my six year vegetarian anniversary and I said, boom, I'm going vegan and kind of never looked back and was always into it. The raw foods really helped me be vegan. I think if I had to cook all my own meals, it would have been a lot harder to uh, be vegan. I think raw foods is a lot easier than cooking foods for, for me, not for everybody. Uh, so I was always, from the beginning, I was like, of being vegan, I was like 70% raw, you know, raw till four, as they call it now. And uh, that just completely transformed everything. Like I, uh, all my all my issues went away as far as uh, the indigestion, all, all the constant uh, chronic stomach pain, all the chronic muscle pain. All of a sudden, like, I became Superman in the gym. And my trainer was like, what happened to you? You know, I, like, basically my body fat percentage went from, like, 18 to 9. I got, like, all this veins pop out and, like, had all this, like, definition that I've been trying to get for so long. Like, I had abs. All of a sudden, I had, like, um, just this, like, really... Like, my physique, I would, like, look at myself in the mirror and just, like, laugh. Like, oh, I look like a like a, a Calvin Klein ad in a magazine. And I'm not trying to, like, pump myself up too much. But it was just sort of, like, how did, could it be this good? <laughs> you know? I'm just sort of, like, this is so we All these people out there, like, buying all those, like, Dexatrim powders. <laughs> like, I'm just eating bananas. And this is happening. And I just felt so good. and was, like, super evangelical about it for a while. And, um, you know, found all the other, uh, big, like raw food, kind of 80, 10, 10 people on, on YouTube, started following them, ended up going to the Woodstock Food Festival in 2012. That was real formative for me. And, 
been every year since, so 12, 13, 14. It's, it's, I'll go back again uh, this year. Not the Hawaii one, but definitely the New York one. And, um, and so, uh, yeah, uh, in 2012, I kind of came to the epiphany that my career wasn't serving me. I mean, I kind of always knew, but when you're on a really clean diet, there's no way to sort of like drown out your negative emotions. There's no way to like, you know, uh, escape from, you know, how you feel. And so I was kind of like so dissatisfied with my job that I decided to, I was an engineer for, for 10 years in the semiconductor industry and I decided that I wanted to be a doctor. And so I kind of like looked at all the different, um, healing modalities and not just, I guess, not just a physician, but I looked at like, you know, registered dietitian, registered nurse, and acupuncture, and then osteopathy, naturopathy, medicine, chiropractic, and I kind of went with chiropractic because its philosophy was the closest to natural hygiene, the, the concept that basically you're supposed to be healthy, that's your natural state, you don't need any outside influence to do that as long as you provide the right conditions. No pill, no um, drug can, can provide health. It's just, you know, having um, the right food, clean air, clean water, enough rest, good relationships, all that stuff. And, and the food is just so important because it's so, you know, like processed and fractionated and screwed up from what our natural diet really should be that that's where you can make the most health gains is, is changing the diet and so I'm now in my second year of chiropractic school I moved to LA um, there's only about a dozen schools in the country and I also wanted to come to a place where there's really good fruit so I'm just killing it on the fruit out here ever since I moved here I've been 100% uh, 80-10-10 raw vegan it's like so easy out here I mean it's just like shooting fish in a barrel it just like there's so much fruit and you can like pick it off the trees and like just the wholesale market you get these like incredible deals you're buying like giant boxes of ripe persimmons for like five dollars and uh and so yeah just just killing it out here continuing to work out um trying to work on building my practice and sort of get getting started with that and um, to spread the message as best I can, leading by example, real involved with the Fruit Luck community here. I'm one of the co-organizers. We have a gigantic LA Fruit Luck community. Check that out if you're in the area, uh, meetup.com slash Fruit Luck. And so that's pretty much it. That's how it impacted me. So if you guys are interested in doing one of the, these of your own or my vegan story, totally encourage you go do it. And if you like this video, you know, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel if you like this story because I got a lot more of it. And I guess I will catch you guys next video. Thank you so much for watching.